What's going on everybody? Hey, it's Jason and today we are going to build another Panzer Fight Stick 3 because why not? It's a good day. It's Fight Stick Friday back in the States I think still. It's a Saturday. My wife's at work. I ain't got anything else to do. Well, I probably could be packing orders, but eh, it's the weekend. So uh, I'm very excited. We did get our uh, printed plexi run in that started in December and finally finished up uh, just in time for shipping today. February 15th here in Japan, so everyone who ordered that should be getting them within the next week or so. I'm very excited to see all your builds with your brand new printed plexis uh, pop up on my Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook feeds, because uh, I'm always excited when I see your builds done. Uh, with that, I did get some special printed plexis made to build some fight sticks to put on the website, as well as to offer stock designs. So today we're going to build one of those with one of our new stock designs, and uh, we're going to put on a white Panzer Fight Stick 3i. So we've got that here. Let's go ahead and uh, get started. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and switch over to the overhead cam, like so. So that, uh, yeah, you guys can just see what's going on. You don't have to worry about seeing my ugly mug while we do this. I'm gonna go ahead and get that in focus. Oh, that's not in focus. There we go. All right. So uh, I did a little stream upgrades over the last couple of uh, weeks. I got this new light right here. I picked up one of the uh, Elgato Key Light Airs. It's nice and small. It's about, let's see, it's only about yay big. And uh, threw it up on a Manfrotto arm so that I can get the light exactly where I want it. Um, I also put my mic, which is right here, just off uh, screen here, uh, on its own Manfrotto uh, friction arm as well. So it keeps the mic near my face so it doesn't sound so echoey when uh, we're streaming. Unless I walk away from it, so I'm pretty excited about that too. Uh, and I did mention in my last stream I do have uh, one of the new Black Magic uh, ATE, ATEM, yeah, ATEM uh, mini live production switcher deals. I haven't incorporated that into the, the streaming setup yet because, well, it's uh, kind of hard. Uh, the way I've got my setup right now, it's going to require a lot of effort to unplug my cameras plug that thing in and reset everything up. So I figured instead of instead of uh, monkeying around with that this weekend, uh, I'm going to wait for a weekend where I have nothing to do and I can devote a lot of time to it. So, yeah. All right, so we're just opening up uh, this Panzer here, pulling it out of the box. I'll go ahead and toss the box over here on the floor and uh, pull this all the way out. And when you see the artwork, you'll hopefully understand why I chose to go with a white case on this. All right. Uh, yeah. So we are going to do kind of all the standard accoutrement, if you will, uh, for this build. We're going to use lots of good quality parts, all available on my website, jasonscustoms.com. Uh, and the first thing we're going to start off with is the rubber bottom mat. Now this is way better than any of that stuff you buy at Michael's and cut out. You know, and stick on. This is die cut, perfect for the Panzer. Uh, it's made out of a rubberized material, and uh, it's got a lot of good friction on it, so you can't go wrong with one of these bottom pads. In a pinch, if you have a non-Panzer fight stick, that Michael stuff works up, works out okay. But uh, I have used it in the past, and over time, it does kind of show little bits of wear and tear, uh, and it requires to be replaced. I don't know how frequently, because I only did it once, and then I ended up pulling it off. So, all right, there we go, look at that. One fell swoop, got this nice bottom pad installed with the nice adhesive already on it, and uh, we still have access to the four screw holes here, so if we want to put the big rubber feet on, uh, we can, but we're not going to. All right, now we can flip this thing over and take the top half off. Today, I did remember to get my power screwdriver, so that should make this a lot easier. <clears throat> and if you guys are following me on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook, you probably saw that uh, we finally finished all of our Mad Cats VS series panels as well as our Fight Stick Pro panels. So uh, I've got to work on the listings for that here soon, and I'll get those as well as the art templates up. Get the art templates over to Sabo's Arcades uh, so that you guys can get some sweet artwork printed up for them when you want to 
install them, and I think uh, that's going to offer some really good options to a lot of really cool classic fight stick cases uh, that Mad Cats used to uh, make before they uh, shut down and then reopened. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that. Uh, the spiritual successor of the Panzer is still well underway. I'm very excited to kind of finish that up. And I should be getting the prototype here very soon. Uh, do I have an experiment? Okay. Uh, there we go. Jesus. It's a little cold today. Everything's contracted. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about that. And uh, let's see what else. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. That's the big news. We do have... Um, sorry, I forgot the universal mount. Uh, we do have some exciting projects coming up uh, that... Well, I guess I could talk about them. Let me think. Should I talk about them? Well, we'll just say... I'll just show this off. This is... Uh, I just got this in the mail. Uh, Arthurmus sent me this. It uh, doesn't look like much, but this is going to be a really sweet addition to the website and to the Panzer builds. So uh, when I'm ready to give you guys more details about that, uh, I will. And I think everyone will be excited. Uh, I've got to do a little bit of testing on it still, but uh, it's it's going to be... I think it's going to be neat. It's going to add some neat features to uh, the Panzer lineup. And uh, when coupled with the Universal Fight Board or any of the other Brook Boards, uh, I think it will add uh, just a lot of really cool things to the mix. So I'm not going to tell you guys what it is, though. I'm not ready. To, I'm not ready yet. So quit asking. Please. Uh, that and let's see what else we got. We got some other things too. Arthur Miss and I uh, we're working through a um, lot of uh, mechanical design on my side, a lot of electronic design on his side, a little bit of collaboration between both of us, and we should have some pretty cool stuff uh, releasing here very soon. Actually, um, yeah, it's. Uh, I think this is gonna be a good long-term collaboration. Uh, he's a pretty pretty sick guy. He's pretty awesome. He. Uh, He's actually the reason we have the Panzer Southpaw, because he wanted one, and I decided to make them for everybody. So, if you uh, have or need a lefty stick, you can thank him for it. <clears throat> Alright, hey, what's going on? Welcome uh, to the stream. Uh, all I'm doing right now is I'm just going ahead and installing the uh, Universal Lever Adapter. Universal Lever Adapter? Oh my gosh. Having a hard time speaking today. I feel like the president. <clears throat> Alright, we got that kind of in place. So let's just grab our handy uh, nut driver here. It's 5 16 inch from Husky. I love these things. Uh, they're not very expensive. I think it's like 10 bucks and you get a whole uh, mess of them in different sizes. I've got both the English, the excuse me, SAE as well as the metric set. Um, yeah. They're just great, great tools to have. And cross, cross uh, tighten there, we're good to go. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and put this like this. We're gonna use just Sanwa buttons for the front, and we're definitely gonna install one of the Pro Cable kits because I like it. And uh, I just like the peace of mind that it offers. Plus, everyone else seems to like it too. It's actually uh, become the number one connector in most fight sticks even people who don't buy my cases still come buy these and throw them in their clone cases so uh i think i think we're on to something here with these <clears throat> all right and we're just going to keep the front as clean as possible we're going to try and use all white obviously the uh cherry switches they're black so yeah uh all the build, all the build outs. Do I do them all myself? Yes, every single build that comes from my shop, I do. Uh, that was that was the case until I moved to Japan. Uh, one of my partners was helping me out. Unfortunately, we we're no longer uh, working together, and uh, his team was doing some of the builds. But uh, now they're all back under my my little control. So, yep, I do them all. <clears throat> and 
And hopefully when I get back to the States, I can, uh, I want to hire a couple people to help and I can train them up and, uh, have a, have a little bit more throughput on the, uh, the production side so I can do a lot more builds and, uh, hopefully offer a lot more stuff, uh, when I get back there. I'm kind of at the, the point now where, here in Japan, where I've run out of space, so adding too much more to the shop is going to encroach on our living space just a little too much. I have a very patient wife and uh, um, I don't know that I want to test those patients any further by uh, adding too much more. That's one of the reasons why I don't do the super guns here is you know, that there's a lot of parts and pieces that go inside of them and uh, I don't want, I didn't want to take up all that extra space in the, uh, in the house. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and there's two flat pieces here on the uh, pro cable, so I'm just gonna use my little adjustable wrench here and tighten it onto the connector, being careful not to go too tight so that you damage the threads. And then I'm going to take my needle nose and just tighten that down, and we're good to go. Just to make sure we have a very nice connection. <clears throat> All right, throw the nutrient gasket on like so and again, we're keeping this one white as well Looks like our plates got a little misaligned, but we can fix that pretty easy <clears throat> And then uh, I'm gonna push that through like this and then we'll go ahead and get the uh, hardware installed All right, there we go Let's Start here push that and this these are just little 440 screws there's some countersinking in the plates and of course it falls out there we go we'll throw a star washer on like so and then throw the uh, nut on as well and we'll just get that started there we go like so and do the same thing for this second screw down here And we'll tighten this down as well. All right, great. Now we can take our uh, Phillips head screwdriver and just hold the uh, nut back here, tighten this thing down. Whoops, gotta watch my nugget so I don't hit the mic. All right, good. And voila, just like that, our pro cable connector is installed. Awesome. And we're just gonna set that over there like that. Out of the, well, maybe not. Uh, okay, uh, like I said, for the front, uh, we're gonna get, uh, we're gonna get uh, sandwall buttons installed here. Uh, uh, oh, okay, so. <laughs> Hey, look at that, my chat is actually popping up in the, uh, ooh, that's awesome. I didn't know that, uh, that was working. Hold on, now I gotta see something. Sorry, guys. Let me hide this. Whoops. Hide that. Eh, whatever. <sighs> uh, the little hint on that little board. Well... Uh, let's just say it will make remapping buttons super easy. How about that? Uh, Jesse in the chat asked if I have any preference or prerequisites for someone to help whenever you get back. Um, I do. They're going to have to live local and they're going to have to work out of my shop. In, and that will be in Virginia. Take all our cables out here, and we're gonna grab. Let's see. We need this one for the lock switch, or I mean, excuse me, the mode selector switch. We need this one for the lock switch. All right. And we're just gonna clip these into place, like so. And then uh, we'll connect uh, up our lever mode selector switch. 
Um, you know, I originally included this in the build. You know, I think the Panzer III is like three years old now. It's crazy. Um, I usually I included this in the build because the Brook Fighting Board, Universal Fight Board, had uh, had the provisions for it. And I thought, oh, maybe people will be able to use this. Maybe people will want to use it. I didn't want to limit the functionality of the board in any way. Uh, so I included it. And I'm not, I'm not really sure how often people use it, because I'll tell you, I don't use it very often. As a matter of fact, I never use it, except for testing, uh, to make sure the dang thing works. So, I'm interested to know your thoughts on that. If you have any, please uh, toss them in the chat. Alright. Oh, here it is. Alright, so what I'm doing now is I'm just setting up the, the wires here, and... Uh, getting the buttons installed you got to do them out like this because otherwise the uh, it's just easier you have a little bit more dexterity with the buttons like this Okay, cool. Push this all in, like this. Cool. Easy day. Hmm. Yeah, to be honest with you, you know, if I could hire anybody to come work on the shop uh, and I could make it worth their while, I would actually want to hire Spencer back and uh, have him work in the shop full time. But I think he makes too much money at his new job <laughs> and uh, schlepping arcade parts and going to shows may not be uh, what he really wants to do when he grows up. When I get back to the States, I only have a couple years left in the military and I can retire with my pension, so I'll have a lot more flexibility with... Uh, with it so I'm looking forward to that uh, okay so we got the whole front side done uh, we're gonna go ahead and I guess I'll just install the brook board now just because uh, I can and then we'll flip this thing over add the art and put the buttons in because we are going to use the uh, the uh, Sam Duxa mechanical buttons I love these things uh, but they are screwing so we have to do it before we install the easy build board and after we install the artwork not a, you know, a crazy amount of effort, but yeah, you know, we have to do it anyways. All right, let me grab a hardware here. Uh, so the crown buttons compared to Sanwa's, um, well, they're different for sure. Uh, they're mechanical switches, so they have the Cherry MX switch inside, and they're the Speed Silvers. So if you really like fast actuating switches and you like using Cherry switches uh, in your keyboard, I would say they're a worthwhile upgrade. They are a little bit pricier, but I think the value in having the mechanical switch versus having uh you know the traditional well, i guess they're all really mechanical switches uh technically but um versus having the you know the sanwa uh sw86 uh you know it's it's kind of personal preference the uh they're both good buttons they're very they're both excellent buttons um i just i'm used to typing on a cherry keyboard and i've got i think i've actually got blues yeah, I got blues in my keyboard, um, 
and I really like the blues because I like to hear them clack. Uh, so having a loud, loud fight sticks really not a huge deal for me. But the um, the crowns they actually use the silver switches, so they're fast and they're quiet, which is nice. So yeah. Sorry. Some of my hardware packs um, were damaged in shipping when I was moving a little, you know, across the United States twice and then here to Japan. And uh, unfortunately, some of them are missing nuts or bolts or whatever. So now I end up including two sets of uh, hardware with every Panzer order just so I don't have to spend a bunch of time going through and finding and counting all the hardware again. But I am getting some super nice hardware packs made that are going to come in a nice reusable, closable plastic container so that we're not just creating a bunch of plastic waste like these bags that we get and we throw and throw away. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, okay, so we got this done. Let's go ahead and flip this thing over and let's clean this off. I always like to use my little microfiber cloth here just to get all the dust and debris out the way. Now we are using a printed plexi, so um, you're not going to see any dust, debris, etc. underneath of it anyways, but uh, good practice is to, to get rid of all that crap. So what we're going to do is you'll see it's got this weird blue ugh, film stuff on the back side. That is just a uh, protective film, so you can actually pull that off quite easily with a piece of tape. this and put it on let's see if I can get it off of course my tape is probably not going to be sticky enough nope now I guess I don't really have to take it off because you can't see it but this has got a little bit of a goop so I'm afraid it won't sit right so I'm just going to try and peel it from the edge with my finger worried that I'm going to peel it off. Hmm. Sometimes these are easier to get off than others. Apparently this is one of the times it's not going to be super easy. <sighs> Alright, let's see. Put this on and lift. Nope. Wait, there, there it went. What a pain. And this is just a protective film they put to make sure that the artwork doesn't get scratched uh, during shipment. It's like the paper on the top side, except it's a liquid when it gets put uh, um, applied and then it dries. Um, kind of like mold release, if you will. Like uh, if you're making mold uh, molds for like making parts and whatnot there see there we go that's what I'm talking about Good, there we go. Jeez. All right. No, my luck, I grabbed the wrong plexi. No, I'm just kidding. It's good. Uh, all right, so we'll get that lined up and uh, 
take this and throw that off the trash pile. And per the use, I'm going to uh, get my hardware started to hold it in place while I peel the brown paper off of it. I'm just finger tightening them now. I'll grab my 2.5 millimeter Allen key here in a second and tighten them down a little bit more. And uh, then I'll peel everything and reveal the art. Now this artwork was, um, it's obviously if you're watching the stream, you know it's Neo Geo inspired. Um, this was actually kind of done by, it was done by Purple Grimace. And then I took it and changed it a little bit, redid some of it. Uh, just for just personal preference type things and then recolored it in a different color than what you're probably expecting bet you everyone's like oh it's gonna be the red standard Neo Geo artwork and you'd be wrong that's okay all right it sounds like my wife's on nope just my neighbor all right, so who's ready to see this artwork by show of hands in the chat? Oh, all right. Let's get that off to the side there. Uh, I guess I could probably get the buttons ready to go before I peel it. Yeah, let's do that. We'll let the anticipation boil uh, because we can <laughs> um, all right so we are going to use kind of some not kind of we are going to use standard Neo Geo button colors but Neo Geo's only had eight buttons or excuse me I'm sorry four buttons so uh, we're going to substitute the we're going to use four black buttons for uh, the additional buttons <clears throat> and what I'm doing now is uh, just saving myself a lot of headache and time later because this is not possible to do when uh, the easy builds installed so I'm getting the buttons set up with their little wiring harnesses first so that once I install them I don't have to worry about them later and I can just line up the easy build board get the wires through the holes and plug them in we'll be done Woo! look at all those hands nice I forgot that there was a hand emoji <clears throat> Apparently, I'm missing a wire. Maybe I threw it away by accident. <laughs> yep, it was in the trash. You gotta be careful. Oh, Alright, so we get this last one done and we'll be good to go. Now we'll just take these uh, rings off, spin them off, alright cool, Let's set this all up over here, cool 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 cool. All right, well, now we can start peeling. Let's set these wires off to the side so we're out of the way. All right, we're gonna start in the upper corner here that is being hidden by the YouTube chat window. And of course, I just put my nails. So that makes this even more challenging. Smart. Ah, there we go. Nice. 
base. Cool. Ooh, there you go. You guys are going to get the hint there. That's good. All right. We can tighten this one down now. That'll help our plexi not move around. I probably should have used a little bit lighter of a blue now that I'm looking at it, but this is still pretty sweet. And normally I would say, hey, you know, be careful with fingerprints, blah, 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 but this is uh, all accessible by a microfiber cloth. So when we get done building it, we can just clean it up and you know, get any fingerprints off of it before we take proper photos and list this thing for sale on the website. So, and you can see I'm just pressing down on the plexi just to give it some support as I peel this ridiculously strong brown protective film layer away from the plexiglass like so and that one was not a clean peel that sucks Nice, 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 nice. All right, let's go ahead and tighten this guy down. And we can tighten this guy down because these don't have any paper underneath of them. But this guy here, I'm gonna pull out, get this junk off, and then I can put it back in. Like so, perfect. All right, so we got that done. Uh, now what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna put the buttons in. These bottom four here are gonna be black. Uh, again, just to make it uh, kind of in line with uh, everything else. Then we're gonna do red, yellow, green, and blue. Red, yellow, green, blue. Red, yellow, green, blue. Uh, and that's exactly how the Neo Geo uh, was set up in the arcades back in the day. I remember getting many hours on Neo Geo at our local Pizza Hut, because that's where we had a cabinet. They had the Neo Geo, and they had a Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat 2, I think. Uh, and maybe they had one. I don't remember. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, so I already forgot. Red, yellow, green, blue. All right, so red. I'm gonna stick that one down. Then yellow, and then green, and then blue. All right, cool. So we'll get those all in like that. And I'm gonna just stand this up so I have easy access to the to the uh, retaining nut area on the back, and uh, go ahead and tighten these down one at a time. I am a big fan of uh, arcade inspired artwork on my fight sticks. Um, the character art for me is awesome, don't get me wrong, but um, I've never, I mean, outside of like Ken and Ryu on uh, Street Fighter, I've never really had any strong affinity to a certain character uh, in a fighting game. Uh, I don't know why. Maybe because I'm not very good at them, and uh, uh, that has probably led to some of it. But, um, yeah, it's just, uh, I'm more of a fan of classic kind of design that's supposed to be um, generic yet specific. Like, you know, a brand, like branding. Like, I'm a big fan of nice branding, I guess. So... Yeah, there you go. Look at that. That looks pretty slick. Now those little, these are just protective covers. I'm going to leave those on uh, until the build is done, but... Alright. Ah! There we go. 
Now we'll just get these black buttons installed. Like so. And I do actually have this in red as well. Um, over my printed plexi pile. That might become a uh, another build that I do this week. Well, I'm not. I'm gonna be in Nagano this weekend. Tomorrow, as a matter of fact. So maybe sometime during the week I'll stream and I'll build the red one and list that one up for sale on the website too. But uh, heck, maybe we'll do it tonight. I don't know. So many options. All right. Cool. All right. All right. So there you go. That's where all the buttons are. So now, this is a little bit of a modified look from the original Neo Geo because, you know, if you remember, it had that kidney bean shape and uh, the black outline followed that. I chose to go with the black outline that replicated the circles for the buttons. Uh, I thought it would look better with the eight buttons and uh, I think uh, I was right on that. I did also did add the ABCD at the top Although that really doesn't have a lot of bearing in modern games uh, like Street Fighter, etc., because you know we don't use that. We use punch, and, you know, low punch, medium punch, and high punch. Uh, same for low, medium, high kick. But uh, again, a little nostalgia there. So I'm pretty pretty stoked. This is coming together really nice, actually. This is I'm even starting to warm up to the blue. I was hoping I was thinking it was gonna be a little bit lighter blue, but uh, I think this came out really really slick. So. Yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, flip this over. I know it's pretty, but we have to actually finish building the inside. So, sorry guys. And I'm just going to gently lay that down on my nice Jason's Customs mat here. <clears throat> and go ahead and install the USB cable here. No reason to do it any certain way. I'm just going to do that because it's easy right now. <sighs> Get the easy build going here. And we'll just put this in its place. And I'm gonna, this little switch here, remember, this is uh, to control your lever mode selector. Uh, you can have this set to be uh, lockable as well, but I'm gonna put it on the ground so it's always available. So no reason you can't adjust your lever to left stick or right stick mode if you're locked out. So, and plus if you go to lockout, it disables that anyway and it automatically goes into uh, a directional mode, but Get that down in place like so, and then we'll grab some of our little 440 screws and put it, screw it all down. Whoops, that's gonna be the wrong size. And I'm being careful not to over tighten because I don't want to break the board. So I'm holding the screwdriver actually very loose. So when it gets to the, the, uh, where it's tight, it just kind of pulls out. And that's actually a design feature of the Phillips head screw. Uh, it's supposed to be so when you're using it with a machine, when it gets to a certain torque, that the screw bit, the screw head pops out. Uh, I'm sorry, the drill, or, oh my god, the screwdriver bit, oh my gosh, pops out. I watched a weird YouTube video a while ago about it. Alright, so let's go ahead and get these uh, wires plugged in, like this. You know, these Brook Universal Fight Boards, actually all of Brook's Fight Boards, I love all of them. And the reason I love all of them is because without them, we'd be doing weird pad hacks still and uh, being very limited with what we can and can't use our fight sticks in because of all the weird pad hacks and dual mods and crap like that you, you used to have to do. Um, Aki Shop was 
I think, I, I don't know, I'm not going to say they're the first, but, you know, they offered the PS360 and then the PS360 Plus, and that really made building custom fight sticks kind of easy, right? They were, that board made it easy. And then, you know, I remember, I still to this day remember the conversation I had with Brooke when they first kind of came onto the scene with their converters, and I, I called them on the phone, I was at the Safeway near my house and I was talking to him and I said, hey, you really need to turn this into a circuit board that we can use on a fight stick. Oh no, I got the wires stuck. Damn it, I'm gonna have to loosen this up. It's like stuck just a little bit. Um, but yeah, and then, you know, even the very first meeting that we had with them when they came to the United States, I remember picking up Brian at the airport, uh, from Paradise Arcade Shop and meeting Van at Arcade Shop, uh, with the, uh, rep who unfortunately is no longer with Brooke, um, at a little cafe in, uh, I think it was Santa Monica and talking in particulars. And, that, and then ever since, we've had a great working relationship with Brooke. And they've released some really cool products that make our lives as custom fight stick makers and your lives as users just so much easier. And, you know, they've demonstrated time and time again that, you know, their commitment to quality and uh, longevity of their boards is there because Sony breaks them with a firmware update and they fix it almost right away. And it's... You just, that's some incredible amount of work and manpower that goes into that. And I will forever be grateful to Brooke. All right. So these are my flush cutters. This is probably the number one tool in my toolbox. I love it. I actually have like three sets of them. And when, uh, ever I go to the hardware store or the tool store, I'm always looking to see if I can find a better pair because I use them so much. All right, cool. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. All right, so we are actually pretty close to being done here. Uh, we still got a couple things to connect up. Here's one of them. This is the interconnect between the easy build board and the uh, directional pad uh, connector on the brook board. So I'm just gonna plug this in. Like so, let's see, this is the left L3, R3, and touchpad click, just two connectors plugged in like so, don't mind my elbow, I know it's in the way, but there we go, and then our 20 pin connector that connects everything together, and voila, like that, oh, in the future, this little board here, when I'm ready to tell you more about it, we'll go like this, and the, the wire will plug into that, and it'll provide some really cool stuff. All right, and uh, there you go, that's all done. Now the only other thing we have to do is install the joystick, and for that, uh, we're gonna use the standard Sanwa JLF. Great lever, I'm not gonna auto mod it. I know I should, but I'm not going to. Um, sorry, sorry, Jung. Uh, I'll set that off to the side and clean up our work area a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my number six truss head screws here. One, two, three, and four. It's in here somewhere. Alright, that's four. Uh, Auto DIY, it's a uh, lever modification. It replaces the stock body, stock gate, and actuator, as well as the pivot on a JLF um, with better parts, basically. The, uh, the Auto DIY mod is a Teflon-based pivot and bowl system, so it has a much smoother range of motion. And uh, the, the gates are one piece, 
whereas this is two so you know this moves a little bit theirs doesn't so it's a little bit stronger of a uh, gate and then it, it comes with three different sized actuators that are all oversized uh, from the stock actuators so you can get uh, basically faster engagement on your switches um, because the the pivot doesn't have to move as far before it uh, the the uh, actuator hits the switch buttons. Then they also have that's one of them. Then they got then there's the B5 mod, which actually does the it makes the lever feel more like a Korean like Fanta lever because it throws a silicon ring in the pivot, so it provides some different tensions. They're both really, really good mods, um, and both offer some unique characteristics that you can do with the JLF. So, yeah, it's pretty sweet. Uh, okay, so I'm going to uh, throw my dust washer on first, obviously. And if you guys have seen my streams before and watched, what I always like to do is push the uh, joystick, or excuse me, the case, just off the edge of my workbench here so that uh, the shaft just kind of goes underneath and then uh, I grab my screwdriver and hopefully not knock anything off <clears throat> and uh, screw these truss head screws in like so just easier to do this way uh, and you can pretty easily line it up and make sure the shaft is centered in the hole just by looking at the mounting points um, below the case and what I also do is I don't screw it all the way down tight until I get a chance to look at it from the other side and just make sure it's centered visually. All right, cool. And flip this over like that. And of course it's difficult to tell because the dust washer is off-centered, but there we go. And that looks pretty good, actually. Good. So now I can turn this up like this. That's going to come off anyway, so I'm going to just take it off. And then I will tighten the screws down, like so. And I'll start in the corner, and I'll go to the opposite corner, and continue on. So that way I'm getting equal tension all the way across. And just check it one more time. Now you don't need to crank these down and possibly spin out hardware. People have done that before. Uh, you have to turn it really hard to do that, but people have definitely done it, so please don't do that. All right, now we'll go ahead and toss the second dust washer on. Like so. Throw the shaft cover on like this. <clears throat> and I am going to use a red bat top. So it's more like the traditional. Uh, more like the traditional arcade cabinet. Someone out there is going to freak out. Why are you putting the threaded insert on first? You're a madman! There we go. Flip that up like so. I'm going to grab my flathead screwdriver. There it is. And I am going to just spin the shaft while I hold the bat top with my left hand. Get that tight, and there we go. We're good to go now. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, we have a Panzer Fight Stick 3i with the Neo Geo color scheme and custom artwork on printed plexi. Yes. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and reveal all of the glory by peeling the. Oh, Protective covers off. Damn it. There we go.
Boom. Just like that. And we'll just get the dust out and the fingerprints out from between the buttons. Like so. Cool. There you guys go. That is the uh, the Neo Geo Panzer Fight Stick 3i build for your viewing pleasure. Wow, that light is really bright right there. Look at that. Watch this. Ooh. Now it's yellow. <laughs> um, yeah, so this was a good build. It was pretty fun. Pretty straightforward. Gives you that uh, arcade cabinet feel if, you, if I do say so myself. You got the uh, straight up angel look on the front with all the white. Pretty excited about that. Now the only thing we got to do is uh, plug it in, test it out, and button it up, and upgrade uh, the firmware. And we can call this one good. So uh, I think I will call this stream a success. And I want to thank you guys for uh, tuning in. And uh, here, we'll just do this. Hey, look at that. Uh, just, yeah, so thanks for tuning in and watching this build. Um, the Neo Geo is again, you know, if you follow me for a while, it's very near and dear to my heart because it was one of the first arcade cabinets that uh, I remember playing on, and it's one of the first arcade cabinets I actually owned um, uh, when I got into the hobby. So, uh, I want a bi big shout out to SNK for developing this system way back in the, uh, the day. Uh, shout out to Purple Grimace P3G3 Designs over on Twitter uh, who helped me come up with the artwork and then. Uh, uh, then you know provided me the basis to kind of modify it and come up with this one and then uh, everyone who continues to support jasonscustoms.com without you guys I wouldn't be here still making cool stuff like these fight sticks and all the replacement panels uh, also huge shout out to Greg Freeman our new brand ambassador I just announced that today um, he put a solid package together and he has been a longtime Panzer fan and owner uh, everyone who I know that knows him, speaks very highly of him, and uh, I'm very excited to bring him on board and uh, see what he can do uh, with us over the next year. So check him out. It's uh, at Boombox Hero on Twitter, and uh, look for him in the Southeast fighting game community because apparently he's cleaning up with his birdie down there. So until next time, this is Jason. Thanks for tuning in. Peace. <laughs>